The stabbing death of Kitty Genovese on March 13, 1964, got only a brief mention in the newspapers a day after the crime. Along with about 20 other cops, NYPD detective Charles Prestia scoured the neighborhood looking for witnesses. What was your impression of the people that you spoke to? Some of them didn't care. Some of them wouldn't answer the door. Some of them said they heard screams and so forth, but didn't go to the window. Some saw nothing when they looked out the window. And some saw a girl struggling and uh, uh, wobbling down the street. And I think that the way this girl suffered through this whole ordeal was enough to make anybody really upset, especially detectives. What was the overall opinion of, of the detectives of these neighbors? When you look back and you see that there was a pause in this perpetrator doing what he did, somebody would have called the police at the first scream, that girl would have been alive. Winston Mosley was arrested when he was caught burglarizing a Queens home five days after the murder of Kitty Genovese. During questioning, Mosley shocked detectives when he calmly confessed to a series of burglaries and rapes. He also confessed to three murders, all women, the last being Kitty Genovese. They said, he just said, okay, I killed her. Wow. No remorse. No, no, really no emotion. The case drew national attention when the New York Times published a front page article with this headline, 37 who saw murder didn't call the police. While the headline said 37 people watched the murder, the first paragraph contradicted the number. For more than half an hour, 38 respectable law-abiding citizens in Queens watched a killer stalk and stab a woman in three separate attacks. But there were two attacks, not three. And who saw what from where in the neighborhood is still in dispute. Where a lot of people came away with the impression the 38 witnesses watched from their windows for half an hour as the murder played out before them on the streets below. That did not happen. Mm -hmm. Forty years after the crime, the Times' former city editor, A.M. Rosenthal, was still defending the paper's controversial reporting. I never said, nor did anybody at the New York Times, or any um, reporter with a brain, say there were 38 peering out of a window. It was a total of 38, and uh, we took the intelligence of the reader to understand. This crime had an impact on this community. Well, Kew Gardens became vilified. For a number of years afterwards, the general thinking was, what's wrong with Kew Gardens? What are the people there like that they can let such a thing happen? And how did the story play across the country? There was a lot of soul searching going on. It caused a sensation because people were horrified. And I think there were some that were content to write it off as, well, that's a New York City story, of course. But then there were others who realized that, no, this is more of a common human occurrence. Actually, right after that story hit, there were a lot of um, what the papers called apathy stories. Kitty Genevieve sort of shined a spotlight on something that had been there all along. Winston Mosley's trial began here at the Queens Criminal Courts building the morning of Monday, June 8th, 1964. It was our intention from the very outset to assert a defense of, of insanity. Lawyer Robert Sparrow assisted his father, Sidney, in Mosley's defense. Who, in his right mind, would commit the multiplicity of crimes in the horrific manner in which he did. He testified in a flat, emotionless manner, detailed, gruesome acts without any display of either emotion or remorse. He was what he was. For Mosley, justice was swift. Within two weeks, he was convicted of Kitty's murder and sentenced to death. The verdict was greeted by some cheers in the courtroom. Prosecutors decided that Mosley's death sentence made trying him for the other crimes he confessed to unnecessary. But three years later, Mosley's death sentence was overturned on appeal. There had been psychiatric testimony during the trial, but not at the sentencing hearing. And the appellate decided that was reversible error, so they changed his sentence to life in prison. Even behind bars at Attica Prison, Mosley remained extremely dangerous. In March 1968, while being transferred from a hospital back to Attica, 
He overpowered a guard, escaped, and went on a three-day crime spree. He held several people hostage in their homes in the Buffalo area. He raped two more women before he was finally recaptured by the FBI. From prison in 1979, Mosley suddenly claimed that Kitty Genovese had used a racial slur towards him. The idea of sex did not enter in at all, but rather the idea of humiliating and degrading them back. That was uh, my excuse, and not even excuse, but a rational reason for cutting the clothing or disheveling it or whatever it was. He chased her down, stabbed her, and sexually assaulted her. That's not what you do if someone insults you. Winston Mosley has written Catherine Pellinero more than 100 letters from behind bars. He writes, a murder victim suffers seconds, minutes, or hours, and then it's all over for him or her. The convicted murderer, on the other hand, besides losing freedom, is condemned inside and outside of prison over and over and over again. He sees himself as a victim. It would seem so. After five decades in prison, Winston Mosley is New York State's longest serving inmate and was denied parole last fall. In a few weeks, Professor Takujian plans to hold a 50th anniversary symposium on Kitty Genovese. The Kitty Genovese case has impacted society immensely, more than people know. The 911 system was not a national system before Kitty Genovese died. We found that this was the single most cited incident in the literature and social psychology. People did not respond to her screams that night, but her screams have been resonating for 49 years. Coming up. All the threats are equally of concern. We have two threats in the system at this time. The first threat is showing an impact location of Chicago. It's incredibly important that we defend our country.